Well, I'm not preaching today. We have three wonderful women who are going to come right now and we're going to have a panel with them and they're going to come and I've got some questions with them. Why don't you come, ladies? We have Jolene Scott and she is our mum of little ones. Come up stage. We have Jane Kilpatrick and she is a mother of teenagers. And we have Elizabeth, and she is a grandma, and we're going to hear some from them right now, but we'll get them seated so they're not standing all the time. That's awesome. So good. Thanks, guys. You know, we honour all mums right now and, and today we want to just get some of the ladies to come and, and speak. And I've got some questions and I've prayed today that, that what they say, thank you, that today you will be able to get something that is ministry to you, something of a new, um, sorry, I'm just going to do it this way. See me okay? I haven't got my hate having my back to people. All right. And um, some ministry to you, some great ideas or new ideas. Um, and so this morning I'm going to hand over to Joel to, be, to speak first. And she's going to introduce herself and how many beautiful children she has. And uh, my question, uh, uh, as she says, is... How, Joel's? how do you manage to have quality, quality time with each of your kids in this time for society? So, Joel's, take it over. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, so, yes, I'm Jolene, but known yeah, yeah. to most as Joel's. So, please feel free to call me whichever suits you best. Um, so, with my husband, Isaac, over there, um, we have four beautiful children that um, we have here with us on earth and we have two beautiful children that we didn't meet here but will mm. be in eternity with them one day. So um, we have an eight-year-old boy, a six-year-old boy, a four-year-old girl and an almost two-year-old little boy that's over there with daddy and hopefully he'll stay quiet today but we'll <laughs> see how he goes. He's a real mummy's boy at the moment. <laughs> Uh, but yes, so um, I have some notes here. I'll see how I go and try to stick to my time. Um, so this thing of making sure that you have, you know, time and investment and you give value to each of your children. I think it doesn't matter if you have, you know, one child or two children or ten children. Um, there, there is a challenge for us to, to give that full love, attention and time to our children because I think there's a lot of distraction and I, I feel that the enemy can really use this in our lives to distract us with, you know, we have these things that are terrible distractions. We have, you know, work. There are, there's a lot of mums that are balancing, you know, children and work and that balance can be really hard and knowing when to be able to just walk away from work and focus on your children and so... Um, this is an area I'm, you know, I feel like I'm constantly learning as well and, and being grown and stretched. But I think the Lord has really been speaking to me over the last particularly couple of years about not just time, but my focus, mm. my, my attention. And so where I can, you know, make sure I have time for my children is my focus there too? Or am I distracted? Am I playing with this phone over here and you know, my kids are talking to me, but I'm kind of yeah. half listening. But, you know, could they sense that. They, they yeah. know that. They know when they don't have your full attention. And I think sometimes that's when they get more rowdy is because they're like, I know I don't have your full attention, so I'm going to make a big scene so yeah. I can get it. And then you're disciplining. And, you know, so rather than kind of having these precious times of that focused attention with them, you know, these distractions. And so I guess that's something that I've, I've been trying to be more conscious of and, and working on is, is my focus here with my children, not just my time? 
Um, and if I can just share a little bit of a testimony as well that the Lord's been doing in me in the last um, kind of probably six or seven weeks. We, um, uh, Pastor Richard Kabayakin came on Sunday night to church and he um, was preaching around anxiety and stress and how much that can impact on our lives. And mm. I, you know, I, I can be a bit stressy. And mm-hmm. when you kind of look in, you've got this big to-do list and you're like, I've got this to do today and then this, 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 this. Then tomorrow I've got this, 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 and then this, this, this. And then, and I would just carry that whole list of my to-dos every moment of every day. And, and I would have, you know, there might be times where that list was a little bit lighter and so I was kind of coping with life a bit better. But I'd always felt like I had this list and I'm stressing. And so then my interaction with my children would not be calm and loving and, you know, my fo- again, my full focus because, you know, I'm thinking about this to-do list. It's in the back of my head. And so I, I've kind of, while I've brought it to the Lord before and been like, Lord, how do I be a mum that's not such a stress head? Because I don't want my kids to just see the stressing mum all the time. Yeah, I want to be calm good. with them and yeah, bring the, pre- the peace and the presence of the Lord with my children. And but it was really amazing because while I've, I've kind of cried out to the Lord about this over the years, there was just something happened that night in that preach. The, the word of the Lord hit my heart and there was a revelation and it, it has actually right. changed me so over the good. last six, six or seven-ish so weeks, good. I think it's been, um, because there was a deep understanding and revelation that the Lord has everything I need for today. Yeah. The manner, the things, it's, it's only today. Spiritual. I just need to look at today. Yeah. The manner for today is here for me. Everything that my children need from me that I feel too tired or too exhausted to do. No, the Lord has given me the manner and the capacity for today Amen. for my children. So and good. So that has, I guess I just want to share that with me because that's been revolutionary for me so over good. the last couple of months. It's it's just really, it's changed. I mean, I still, there's still me, mum comes out, you know, get mm-hmm. your shoes on and, rah, 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 and get out <laughs> the door and let's go, you know. So there's still those kind of momentary, um, you know, stress kind of, got to get on with this. But uh, overall, these, this list that's just been distracting me and bothering me for so long, I felt like I've been able to just put it to the side and go, no, I'm here right now right. with my kids. I'm going to invest so here. Good. I want them to know they are loved and valued and, you know, give that full focus and time to them. And so um, I guess I so just good. in, you know, with all of that, I had a couple of um, just little examples of things that, um, you know, that we do in the ways that we connect with them. And we uh, one of the things that I do is, is kind of to, to top and tail the day to make sure that, in the morning when they come out all sleepy and, you know, kind of not quite with it, that I go over to them and give them a big hug and just be so happy to see them in the Good. morning, you know, just how are you, darling? Yeah. And give them, even if it might only be three or four seconds, but just yeah. that really fo- completely focus on that that child, whoever's come out to me first, um, just give them my full attention and, you know, I'm so happy to see you and, yeah. Um, and do that for each each of my children as they stumble out of bed. And then it, of, of an evening, um, we, um, so as a family in the lounge room, we'll do our devotions. So we'll read and pray and sing. Um, but then I put them in to bed. So I go and tuck them into bed and just, um, so I ask them, what was something you enjoyed about today? So for the bigger boys, it was, what did you enjoy about school today? Because I'm not at school, and so I don't really know always what happens. They do chat to me a bit, which is lovely, but just a good opportunity for if there's anything else they want to kind of tell me about, then they can. Then I asked them, what was hard about today? Because I just yeah, want to give them that opportunity. If there was something that went on that they're not quite sure, how do I bring this up with mum or, you know, and it also mm. gives them a chance to actually think through the day and go, oh, was there anything hard about today? And just mm. gives them that moment of reflection as well. Um, and then I sing with them. So I've got a, a different song with them. And so I just Great. sing, give them a kiss and a cuddle. And so while I'm doing that, uh, we have, um, so we have two rooms. So the older two boys are in a room and the little two are in a room. And so I kind of, I have a rule that if I'm talking to one child, the other one's not allowed to interrupt. So just because then again, it's, it's a note right now, this is where my focus is. This is yeah. where my time is. 
I'm coming to you. Uh, you know you're going to have my full attention in just a moment, but right now I want this child to know that that kind of time and attention is completely on them. And because it's really hard when you've got four of them and they're all kind of, you know, they all need you about everything yeah. all the time. <laughs> it, so wanting to meet all of their needs but but also not make them all feel like a number, you know, make, make them feel really valued in who who they really are. And so I think another thing... Um, and again, just some specific examples. So Elias, he's our eldest. He, <laughs> at the moment, he loves reading and talking about Star Wars and Mandalorian. He could just do that all <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> There's only so long I can talk about Star Wars oh, yeah. and Mandalorian. <laughs> well, I think it's very cool. But it's what excites him at the moment. And so where, you know, I'm, I'm careful not to just cut him off when I'm like, I'm so over this conversation. Can we talk about something else? But it's going, no, this is important to him. I mm. love him dearly. I want him to know that what he has to say to me matters. Um, so that's kind of just something that I do with him particularly. Um, Micah, he's our six-year-old. So he um, he's just learned how to tie his shoelaces and he was ecstatic. But we had the couple of days where yeah. he was, you know, just painstakingly trying to learn how to do this. Sh- and it, mom, I need help with these shoelaces. And I'm like, okay, good. And, you know, you, so you get in there with them and you help them again yeah, and let good. them learn and fail and whatever. You know, just doing these things with them that are important to them and, and showing that you care. And then, of course, when he got it, the celebration was jubilant. So, yeah, um, I don't know, we, um, she loves to read books and go on the scooters together outside. And so, that's, um, you know, something I do with her as much as I can. Um, I do, I work um, remotely during the week. And so, sometimes it's tricky having that balance. But I just make sure that, you know, at different points in the day, I just stop and say, so no, good. work is going to wait for a moment. I'm going to go and have this time with my girl and usually my little boy because he's with us too. Um, and and just have that time together outside, fresh air together, you know, and it just reconnects us and then there's that calmer atmosphere in the house as well. So good. Um, and, and Hosea, and he loves to dance. He This is a little yeah. guy that loves music and loves to dance, which mummy particularly loves about him as well. But then there's those times when you're trying to, you know, do dinner or you're trying to do something and he's just like, dance, dance, dance. I'm like, ah, yeah. what am I going to do? So trying to say yes more than I say no <laughs> to him. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can't always do the thing right then and they sometimes have to learn to wait. But trying to say yes more than I say no um, so with good. him. So, um, yeah, that's so awesome. that's um, some of my thoughts. That's Thank good. You hey, that. that's so good. Jules, you're a, she's a good mum. If you're a young mum and you need to know some things, I recommend go to Jules. She's doing so well. With all her tribe. That's <laughs> wonderful. Well, Jane, how many children do you have? I have two, not four, so well done to yeah. you two. <laughs> I have two boys. David is 20 and Matthew is 18. So they're, we say Matthew's a 18-year-old, a 15-year-old's brain and an 18-year-old body, so he's okay. my developing teenager. Yeah, yeah. David, my oldest boy, has flown the nest and... Um, is living up in Ely Beach and doing a builder's apprenticeship. Great. And telling me that the falls are too cold to swim in, which I laughed at for North Queensland. <laughs> That's um, good. Yeah. Well, as a mother, um, what would you, what are you doing to encourage your children to have a personal relationship with Jesus? Okay. Now, this is probably, um, to me, one of the most important things. Right. and. Sorry, I'm going to get all tearful. No, it's good. But one of the things that I probably struggle with the most, Mm. because my husband is not saved, so we co-parent, and he's an amazing dad. So good. Thanks. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah. Good, Jane. Don't you love just the vulnerability part? Well, Jane. Um, so it is hard, but I know that I have God on my side and that um, yeah. prayer. And I also have an amazing team right here. Thank you, too. <laughs> and our wonderful life group. There's so much wisdom so good. within the church and just having that support and wisdom, people that have been there and yeah. people that are going there and people that just love the Lord so much that that's really great. And I really so do appreciate good. that. Um, 
Our boys have been through the Grace Lutheran system um, and I, we, I did go to Grace Lutheran Church um, in the younger days, so they came with me. Um, Gary, my husband, is a shift worker, so that worked. Um, so they've grown up knowing about God and about faith. Um, they both chose to sort of sit down with the pastor and be introduced to communion and things and have one-on-one time, which was wonderful. And David um, actually did get confirmed when he was 15. I'm a little bit sceptical because he was a very cute girl, Grace. Yeah. <laughs> However, he did take that, ple- you know, and so um, I do know that they understand faith um, and that they understand, I try really hard to just tell them that it's not about religion, but it's about a personal relationship yeah. with Jesus. That's right. It's um, good. And that there's one God, but there's many different yeah. faiths that celebrate him. So the way the church that I choose to go to doesn't necessarily have to be what feels comfortable or right for them, but to mm. do their own exploring. Mm. Um, I've got old-fashioned notes because you can tell there's a bit of an age difference, Giles. <laughs> Um, yeah, so they come, when they ask me what I want for my birthday, I say, well, you owe me a church, so they'll come with me. Um, usually around Christmas time they come, and Mother's Day sometimes. They're not here today, but Matthew did say he'd come, and so I try to, sometimes I take them to the evening service, because I think that that's a different yeah. connection, and they do sort of say, Mum, this church is pretty cool compared to Grace Lutheran, <laughs> which is small and just a different, you know different bracket um so i pray for them yeah. i pray for them their concerns their decisions and most frequently just that prayer that every every christian mum prays yeah. for their salvation yeah. they know that they know yeah. that i spend time in their rooms when they're not there and yeah it's um, good. It's <laughs> so good you know and just that i'm that that's what i'm doing for them and that constantly that's my prayer um Sometimes I pray more urgently than others, obviously. Um, you know, God had a word for me recently about just just calm the farm, just just be there and nurture them, you yeah. know. It might not be my job to bring them to their faith, but I sure as heck can encourage them and support them and nurture them once they find it. So, so good. I really love that word. Mm. Um, and mostly, I guess, I just thank God for, like, lending me... <laughs> Two such beautiful boys. That's so good. So good, Jen. And yeah. letting me have a role yeah. <laughs> in their life just to raise them and for them to know how important faith is to me mm. and that God is there for them and that, that I, I really have faith that they will come to know God and just what a blessing it is to be a mum. And to also have been blessed by an amazing mum and a beautiful mother-in-law. So good. So, yeah, I guess just as a parent, that's if you do have people and your children and your family, it's just the most powerful thing we can do is just pray. Yes, amen. Amen. It is, isn't it? So good, Jane. Thank you for being so vulnerable with us. It's not always easy to, you know, go there, but it is it is. We are entrusted with children and it is our responsibility to pray for them daily, sometimes consistently through the day, (laughs) you know, and always, I've always prayed for this for my children, that they would have their own personal relationship with God because when they have that, then they're on their way with a relationship with God and God's got them. And they're in, they're in the best place that they can be. And so if you're here today and your children are not walking with the Lord, pray that prayer that God, that they would have that a revelation of God that somehow, whether it be through you or whether it be through someone else, a connection that they would encounter God for themselves. When they have that, it's with them forever. They can't run, they can't deny it, they know the power of God, they know God is real, they know that God loves them. And so I encourage you to to do that for your children. Well, Liz, Liz, how many children do you have and how many grandchildren do you have? Okay, Um, I am 68 years old, I have been married for 46 years, my husband. Wow. 
My That's husband. That's awesome. Good. My husband, Terry, is here. Um, I used to be a high school teacher. Um, I have a 43-year-old son. Um, he lives at Mount Crosby. And I have a 41-year-old daughter who lives in Melbourne, both married. I have two grandsons, two seven-year-old grandsons, one up here, one down there. And I have a 10-year-old granddaughter up here and a five-year-old granddaughter down in Melbourne. And I just want to honour you. Yeah. I've already learnt from you guys. Yes, yeah, so good. And I want to honour you because yeah. I haven't had the I haven't had to do what you've had to do. Yeah. I have had to learn all the monster truck names. Um, yeah. You know, you talk <laughs> about the focus. Yeah. Okay. I have uh, Raffaello down in um, Melbourne. He he goes through all these obsessive phases and monster trucks. So he would be asking monster trucks and I'd have my iPad while I'm FaceTiming on the computer trying to find what monster truck is so I could have a conversation. Now he's into football and it's like dusty this, dusty that and whatever. Yeah. And, um, and I'm really struggling. I'm yeah. really struggling. That's where he comes in. Just yeah. a minute, I'll go and get par. <laughs> okay. Um, well, a as a grandmother, what do you know now that you wish you knew when you started parenting? Okay, I've got eight pages because I need big font. It's <laughs> all right, I'm like that too when I'm, I'm on paper. I'm also a crier, so <laughs> be prepared. Okay, <laughs> the thing that I've thought most about is how quickly time passes. Yeah. That is yeah. the thing that is really, you plan the wedding and it's like I'm engaged forever, yeah. <laughs> but you don't think about the marriage. Yeah. You plan the pregnancy, you, you know, you've got the clothes, you've got the toys, you've got the room, and you don't think about the raising of the child. I remember when I bought a second-hand cot for my firstborn and the lady said to me, oh, make the most of the baby, it goes so fast. And I went, yeah, whatever. And now <laughs> he's 43 going on 44 yeah. and I think, what happened? Um, the pregnancy, you know, you plan it, it seems to go on forever and, and then you finally have this baby and your world narrows down to sleep. If I could just get the kid to sleep the crying, the what is wrong now, the endless nappy changes, why can't I get the wind up and the world just becomes so narrow, is it night or day, I should get out of my pyjamas before he gets home, yeah. have I had a shower today or not, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> and, then so there's this, and then there's this amazing <laughs> guilt thing about productivity, well what have I done today and um, what, what, what am I actually achieving here? And I remember my mum saying to me, uh, my mum's been dead for eight years. She would be 90, 90 actually now, if she was still alive. And I remember her saying to me, she was of the generation, you get married, you don't work. You know, that was the deal back then. So she never worked outside the home. And she said, what have I done with my life? I have two sisters. And I said, look at us, where you work. Yeah. We are Good. what you have Good. nurtured and put into for all these years, we are educated, we contribute to society, we are healthy, we are well, we respect rules and whatever. I said, there's your work and we're eternal, Mum. Yeah. We last forever. The bridge won't, the road won't, the building won't, yeah. the yard won't, the garden won't, the house won't. Yeah. But we last forever. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And so that is the thing that I've mostly got is this passing of time. Um, train up a child in the way they shall go. That's the thing that my dad mostly did the, um, the provision and the mum did the nurturing and the teaching. And so she passed on the values. We went to church from a very young age. That was just a habit. That's just a habit. And it's a habit that Terry and I have passed on because there are patterns in their lives and don't go for the quick fix. That's what I would say. Mm. Short-term pain, long-term gain. So the thing with a short fix is that you do it, have to again, do it again, do it again. Do it properly once. So determine what values you want to pass on because it's the values. I often say to people, I'm not sure what keeps us married after 46 years because 
he likes the football and I don't, and I do this, you know, whatever. We've got very mm. different yeah. interests, yeah. but we have exactly the same values. Yeah, it's good. That's what's important. Very good. And we work out as a couple what values we want to input into the children. And that's the most important thing. Before they get to that age where the world and their friends are the influencers, they already have a foundation there. And I can remember my son saying, he was tricky at times, I'll just say that. Um, he would do something wrong. We drilled into him for a very young age, be sure your sins will find you out. And they always did. Yeah. You, know, the, you know, proclaim, declare, yeah. be sure your sins will find you out. Phone call. Oh, I saw your son up the street. Said, la, la, la. What's he doing up the street? He should have yeah. been at school. <laughs> um, and there were just many occasions where he got caught out. The time that he borrowed the car, came home, and there's a Pedder's sticker on the back, and you go, hmm, what happened, son? You know, because the car had been missing for a day. Oh, it's just at a friend's place. Pedder's. Yeah, they do suspensions. Yeah. yeah. We, we <laughs> never have found out that story. <laughs> but, you know, you, you spe- we, we spoke that over our child, and you know, he's now, my, both my kids, they are passing on the values. They're s- starting our own. I love the nighttime thing. Yeah. We've just had two weeks in Melbourne with our daughter and she has the two kids. And every night I got to do the privilege of how was your day today? What was the thing that, that was special today? And what do we need to ask God for tonight? What And the manner thing? I'm only just learning that. I've been doing that for the last 12 months. God, give me today my daily bread. Give me today my daily bread. Because it never ends. You never stop being a parent. You never stop praying for your kids. You know, there's all those things that that just keep going. My son and daughter, they they go to church. They follow the pattern. The grandkids, going to church is just normal. Sunday, that's what you do on Sunday. You go to church. And I love to see my granddaughter dance. She dances in church, prances around quite embarrassing at times but you know she yeah. worships the lord yeah, she i so love good. that about children is that yeah. there's no inhibitions yeah. you know they just love god and and so you know that's that's the pattern we pray over them the proclamation i made over my children when they were young is my children shall be taught of the lord it's in isaiah my children shall be mm. taught of the lord great shall be their peace and they shall be established Amen. In righteousness. Yeah, it's good. I had to pray that for quite a while. Yeah. You know, there, as I say, there were some tricky times. Hang in there. That's what it's I would good. say. Hang good. in there. You it's know, so God, good. I'm sure this, that mum is back again. That mum's back again. She's back. Yeah. That mum is back again. You know, we will fight for our kids. We will do that yeah. for our kids. Um, uh, and I think my son said, you know, whenever I tried to do anything wrong, I felt guilty and it's all your Fault. I yeah. never enjoy sinning. So, you know, yeah. set your boundaries. Um, um, the one other things I've learned is no prior experience necessary. I'd never, never nursed a baby in my life. And then I had this baby and it was like... <laughs> and I remember when he was one year old, I stared at him in his birthday high chair with the cake and going, you're alive still. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> set boundaries... Agree as parents, you know, on what's important and what's not. Don't let other people tell you. You you choose your boundaries. You decide what and agree on them. Um, When you have your next baby, I learnt this, you don't halve your love. Okay, I've got a second baby. How am I going to fix... You know, you get a whole new bundle. I learnt that. Um, And I've learnt there's no such thing as a parent, a perfect parent. Still learning still learning as a grandparent and I'm still learning as a parent. I still get into trouble, still get into trouble. Um, Kids need to be bored sometimes. That's how they, the gifts that are in them get developed. So you don't entertain them all the time. It's good. Because they need to develop their gifts and I've seen that. The, The beauty of being a grandparent is you get to do it all again without all the responsibility and you get to see all the joy That you didn't have before and you get to go slippery slides, climb trees, all those things again. <laughs> and the other thing is you don't rescue your kids all the time. Yeah, they need to learn good. resilience. Very so good. that good. is – and that's hard. That's yeah. hard. I'm done. That was great. Oh, so many nuggets there. So good, hey. Now, can I ask you, each of you, what is one nugget of wisdom 
on parenting that you would give? Um, my nugget is cry out to the Lord. Yes. <laughs> I, I <laughs> cry out to the Lord, even in the very moment that something is going on and you're like, what am I doing here? <laughs> yes, Lord good. Jesus, help me. Because he... He knows us and loves yeah, us so deeply, he but he knows and loves our children so deeply. Yeah. And he has everything we need. He he has the answer yes. for that very moment. He you know, he wants us to train those children up in his way. So he is going to give us what we need to do that. And mm. so while, you know, an answer might not always come immediately, one just crying out to him puts our focus up on him and again talking about focus sometimes you know we're looking at the the drudge and the mess and it's like yeah but then fixing our eyes on him is that first point and then in his time the answer will come for that and yeah so so that would be mine Joel's that's great Jay I would just say just love them unconditionally Mm. make sure home is home Good. They're always yeah. welcome and no matter what's going on, the door's open yes. and that they will get that unconditional love. Yes, yes. And then that's what you remember about your mum too. <laughs> yeah, so good. So true, you know, like that's that's so true. Both both of your answers, are, uh, we'll get to you, Liz, but, uh, but it's so true. Like God, number one, number two, number three, number four, no. All the time. Having a home that is not a, a home where they're going to be rebuked, nagged, told off, but a safe haven, you know. And it's really that that home that is always open, that is a home of love, that they can come even if they failed, they've messed up, they, they know that there's unconditional love in that home. They know that they're going to be okay. They know they're going to be safe. And that's really important. You know, even when your kids don't do what you uh, are happy of them, what they're doing, give, them, give that to the Lord. Let him deal with that, right? But love them. Love them, love them, love them. And that is the most important thing. Pray for them and love them. And Liz? Okay. Um, I think... My nugget of wisdom would be it's not the things that will the kids will remember, it's the experiences. Yes, that's good. My grandson in Melbourne, when we went down, I haven't been down there for two years, so he was five, you know, and five-year-old is quite yeah. different to a seven-year-old. Yeah. And before I came, yeah. my daughter phoned and said, Rafa wants to know if you're going to still play crash cars. And I went, okay, so... So I have to pack my slidey pants for crash cars because you're at one end of the hallway, he's at the other end of the hallway, he's got his cars, I've got my cars and we just smash them into each other up and down the hallway. (laughs) It's all very well when I have to fetch my cars. I can't get up and down like he can, so I have to slide, okay? (laughs) So you have to adapt to whatever. so good. (laughs) And, And that's what he remembered. Boo, that's what they call me, Boo plays crash cars. So we played crash cars down there. So create memories. Yeah. The kids now go through the photo albums. Remember when this, remember when I, remember when. The toys they'll grow out of, but they don't grow out of the memories that oh, you create so with them. True. Give so them. true. My whole thing is time. Time yeah. passes quickly. Make the most of that time. Yeah. yeah. I'm done. Oh, so good, ladies. So good. Thank you very much. Let's just stand and give them a round of applause one more time. So good. Thank you, ladies. You said so well. You can go. That's so good. Wonderful. Great nuggets of wisdom right there. We don't need the pulpit. That's fine. I was going to close in a song, but um, it's pretty messed up up here. So uh, so we're going to, because it's Mother's Day, we're going to give you a bit of an early minute to have coffee together. We've got a few things that we want to bless the mums with. And t- Laura... Oh, there, there's a video. I am so sorry. I forgot the video. Can we sit down and watch the video, please? <laughs> Happy Mother's Day.
One thing I love about my mum is that she's so beautiful and she's so funny and makes us laugh and always has a scripture for us to read and um, always has something nice to say about our lives. Um, something I love about my mum is she always makes good jokes, funny jokes, and she does things to my brother that are very funny. <coughs> she helps us with our homework and... She loves us. She, she buys me everything and even because her cook her make gets us food. Mum helps me read when um we're struggling to read and when we're hungry she always bakes for us and when we get hurt over sore or whenever she gives us a hug and a kiss. Uh she's funny. She's nice. She's beautiful. You can eat chocolate more than Dad does. <laughs> and, and she also lets me um, like have lots of play dates and play with my friends. My mom's the best. I love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. I am Mom. We love you, Mom. You're awesome. We love you, Mom! We love you, Mom! Oh, that's so beautiful. Ah, oh, it's so, so beautiful. Aren't they gorgeous? I got Rachel here, my daughter. Rachel, would you like to stand? Because not many people know you. She, um, she works with children 
And she tells me all these funny stories about the kids in childcare. They are so funny. She made me this necklace, my Rachel. Nice. Uh, I feel really blessed. But, you know, today we really do want to honour the mums. And, and before we close, I just I know that for some it's a really hard day because your, your mums are not with you. Um, or you're perhaps they're interstate, they're away from you, or perhaps you're estranged with them. And I just want to take a moment just to pray for you right now. If you just like to close your eyes. Father, I just pray for Lord, for those, or oh God, today is a hard day. For, for some that they've gone, um, that they've passed away. And Lord, the memories, or oh God, are, Lord, emotional and, and overwhelming. And Father, I pray that the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with them today. Father, for those that are away or estranged or feeling, Lord, there's so much still to be said and done. Father, I pray that, that Lord, even in this day or in this week, the opportunities will come to reconcile, opportunities to come to be able to appreciate them and say what they think in a, in a loving way to, to their mums. Father, I just pray that the peace of God would come upon every person. And I pray that today, as different ones come and celebrate and have times with family, that today mums would really feel blessed and honoured today. In Jesus' name, amen.